Panago Pizza presents S S D P P the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Yo, I got a question. What is, is the question? Can I get a mocha frappuccino? I hate that TikTok so much. Can I get oh my god, <laughs> Jesse, can you send me that so we can at least play it on the show? I now did, Steve's I will not. Up. I'm sorry. No, you know what my favorite hobby is. Holding people at the drive through hostage. And singing to them for your <laughs> TikTok. So for anybody who doesn't know, there's a viral TikTok of a girl singing to a Starbucks drive through person. Who is politely wide-eyed <laughs> looking at her, just like, can't wait for this to be over. It's the most awkward thing uh, imaginable. He's, he's doing the, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. That's a boring story. Yeah. Yeah. This really brightened my day at work. <laughs> There's that, what's the, I, I might have mentioned this before, but there's that tweet. It's like, the se- if I get to my second, yo, that's crazy, wrap up your fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> the scale the scale of how interested I am in the story at the bottom is, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's how I would respond to yo, that's crazy. Oh, really? <laughs> Adam, what's your question? Uh, my question is, good idea or bad idea? Oh, okay. Okay. If you were a dad, all right, uh-huh. do you think it's a good idea or a bad idea to send your child and your wife together on a plane with no food for your child. Yeah, no, that sounds good. That sounds like mom's Great problem. idea, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom's yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Well, yeah, they're up in the air right now. But uh, but uh, the one thing we forgot to pack, because you always forget something. Yeah. She forgot a ring. I forgot to pack the bottles for the baby. <laughs> Maybe that's why she forgot a ring. <laughs> that might be it. Well, are they? Yeah. <laughs> so are they just in your fridge? What's that? Are right. all the baby bottles no, we, in the okay, fridge? Okay, so here's the thing: when you with baby baby food, uh, if you're doing if you're if you're off the nipple and you're on the full blown powder, which we are, there's the word um, nipple. Yeah, uh, the uh, um, the thing to do is to hold off on putting water in until just before you need to use it. So I just fill bottles with powder, the powder that we need, and then I bring it, and then instead anyway, of the nipple. Yeah, so I have three Sorry. bottles of powder sitting on my on my thing right now, and my dishwasher. Also, here's how good of a day I'm having. Dishwasher literally fell out of its spot, and uh, we have a huge water leak, and it's great. It's all oh, great. No. Everything at home's good. So we're tearing apart the kitchen tomorrow, believe it or not. Damn. So we knew it was coming, but it all happened at once. My uh, my fridge lights are out. Uh, it stopped working too. It's great. It's all falling apart. Does all Pearson Airport have like a convenience store that might have like baby food I, or they, something? I, apparently not. No. Weird thing. The only thing they don't sell at Pearson and at airports in general is yeah. baby food, which they should, right? Yo, that's crazy. Sorry. <laughs> How dare you? Let's get to the crown. Wow. <laughs> okay. No, listen. It was his first one. Yeah. So I didn't get to the second one. But let's get to who wore the crown last night. Leafs, Oilers, live life generously and life will treat you royally. Steve actually went to a bar, had Crown Royal with friends last night. Yes. Because he said what? Soup. No. Is what he, he said. said. What? He said. Oh. Oh, gosh. Why not? Oh, Yo, my that's God. Crazy. That's yeah, crazy. That was, did you really did you really not know that's where I wanted you to go? No, I didn't. Did <laughs> Steve, <laughs> he didn't know. Did Steve live royally? I, I I mean he did you pay for the round? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then yeah, he's he has lived life generously. Now life is treating him royally, nah. which is how Crown Royal works. You know how to use the hashtag <laughs> our town, our crown to get a part of this. Uh tell us who wore the crown for you. Steve, what did you want to say? Why not? Is what I wanted to say, but um, no, uh, I wasn't going to say soup. It was just the first word that came to mind because I panicked. Justin Dam Hall, that guy played eleven games last year, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden he's their top right-hand defenseman in a pinch. Tyson Berry goes down. Um, would you believe me if I told you Justin Hall played thirty-five minutes last night? I would not, because I know that's not true. That's right. He played twenty-six <laughs> minutes in <and> ten seconds. <laughs> He played a lot. Played more than Some of us also oh, watched the game, man. Stephen. Hey, and... listen. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I could maybe catch his leaving. Um, no, him and Jake Muzzin are the top pair right now. Wow. Yeah. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. Is it wild. crazy? It's, yo, that's, yo, that's crazy. crazy. Um, <laughs> and, you know, last year, mm-hmm. all he was doing was, you know, Riding a bike and going to get everyone's coffee order yeah, and yeah. Falling singing at the dude and, the, and falling downstairs yeah. and Babcock kicked him. That's why he fell. <laughs> it doesn't count as falling if you were kicked. Um, Good so question. it's unreal. Uh, congrats to Justin Hall for being a hockey player instead of a hockey practicer because that's what he was last year. Wow. <laughs> wow. I am giving my crown again 
to William Neely, the king of Scandinavia, <laughs> all of Scandinavia, all of it, not just the country he's from, but all of it. Sorry, Sweden and Finland. Well, team going, some of Europe's starting goalie, or well, he was supposed to be. It's actually, it's, he's not even Scandinavian. It's, it's, are Danish people technically Scandinavian? Don't know. See, this is what we need to find out. But the it, king of are the you Danes. north of Italy? Scandinavia. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's Scandinavia. It's the Mediterranean <laughs> Scandinavia. That's how it works. I think he is. Anyway, king of the Scandinavians anyway. Freddie Anderson. Hey. Hey. Freddie was freaking phenomenal. Again. Again. And then, so Michael Hutchison, we thought might be starting because it was, um, it was rumored that he was the first guy, or sorry, first guy off at practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Maybe he needed to go to the bathroom. Maybe, yeah. No, no one considered that. Freddie Anderson, guys, is so flipping good. Oh. Flipping good. Is so good that he allows three goals and three shots. And should be kicked out of the league and the team. And this is why they never win, according to many people that I read. After the Flames game, people are just so high and low with this guy. Wow, no kidding. Uh, no kidding. Fastest European goaltender to 200 wins. How like how is that possible? How is yeah. Hoshik and uh, uh, Hoshik's Lund- the first Lundquist guy? Lundqvist is another one? Yeah. That's man. wild, man. Rene has played for some really good teams. Freddie Anderson's the fastest one? Okay. He's the fifth fastest in the history of the NHL. Like, isn't he tied with Jacques Plante? It goes Ken Dryden, Holtby, Jacques Plante, Frederick Anderson, tied with Chris Osgood. Dude, how about Brayden insane. Holtby? I didn't know he was that high. Yeah, wow. I was just Holtby. But Freddie Anderson. Yeah, man. Fifth all time. That's a major fastest accomplishment. 200 wins. To have yeah. the Leafs in a top 10 in anything in a record book is huge. <laughs> that just does tough. not. I think it was oh, like yeah. Matt Sundin and Freddie Anderson. Matt Sundin with the overtime goals. Yeah. And Freddie Anderson with that. That's the only Leafs that are ever in oh. anything ever. Oh, but the shootout. Okay. Oh, but <laughs> friggin' 100 Come mile on. an hour slap shots. How about yeah. that? They're Jacques. Um, the, no. And the only reason that he let in a goal last night is because Cody CC is out there trying his best and trying to. <laughs> Throw the puck into back to Calgary. You know what? <laughs> I don't know. I was willing to let that slide because, like, no. sometimes you accidentally no. chip it out. The one that made me literally burst out laughing in public was he tried to dump it in from center ice and, and got he... it over the net. Yeah. No! No! <laughs> I couldn't believe yeah. that. I they couldn't can't, believe that. They can't really be serious, yeah. right? Seriously. I used to do that in NHL just for fun. Like, if I'm up big, I'll just do it for fun. Because if you hold down R1 for, a, like, a long time yeah. when you're on the puck, It'll you're true. just fucking Mark <laughs> McGuire <laughs> sent into the stands. Dangers. You know? Dangers. Yep. <laughs> Shove but the paper under your head. You don't expect yeah. Cody Cece to do that in real life when he's trying to play the game. No. And just, <laughs> boy, he tries every shift, and there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but played over 22 minutes in a pinch. Yep. Without Tyson Berry, but yep. enough about all that. Freddie Anderson, Freddie Anderson. win number two hundred, yeah. and he didn't even give a shit. Um, I don't even. Yeah, no, of course. Um, I, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta wonder how long is it? How long will this streak have to go on before people start seriously considering him for the Vesna? He has to win the Stanley Cup. Dude, he no, has no, to win no. the Stanley Cup this year, and then next year he can contend for the Vesna. <laughs> that's how it works. Like I'm serious. That's not that's how that works. It, it absolutely <laughs> is how it works. He is the Toronto Maple Leafs, man. Freddie is the Toronto Maple Leafs, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Basically, and then he will have won the Vesna in a contract here. That's how it oh, works. You see? man. I'm Freddie's oh. agent. Wow. Mm, the Mediterraneans and the Scandinavians helping each other out. <laughs> like we always have. <laughs> if he starts. Just natural allies. Just, you know, always. There's never been a point in history where we didn't help each other out. If Freddie starts like 68 games this year and has like near 50 wins, mm-hmm. that's... Vesna, right? Yeah, there is... Well, and you look at the three nominees from last year. It was Vasilevsky, who was undisputedly the best starter. Mm -hmm. Then the other two guys were just goalies who had really good seasons, but were basically in a tandem. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ben Bishop, and... uh, Well, and he wasn't in a tandem near the end. And Robin Leonard. Right. Both guys, I don't think they even cleared 45 games. Freddie's... I don't know. Leafs have only played 34. He's probably already got about 45 games under shouldn't, his belt. Shouldn't that count for something, by the way, the amount of games a goalie plays? And versus, yeah, absolutely. Do, do you it think that it does? does? Do you think people take that into consideration when they're voting? Yeah. Well, like, for example, 16-17, um, Cam Talbot. Mm-hmm. He didn't have the the best save percentage, but he basically won every single one of Edmonton's games. Their backup goalie, I want to say, was like, Laurent Brassois, who is exactly 15 Brassois. years old. Yeah, Brassoit and 
Dar, sorry, Brasoyet, if you're one of those people who pronounce Detroit <laughs> in an annoying way. So, uh, yeah, he had Brasoyet behind him, and mm. I asked the fucking guy, and he said his name is Brasoyet. And, uh, no, that, so that, that to me is extremely important. If you yeah. play almost all of your team's games, yeah, you should probably uh, get more votes than the guy who plays 45. I think If so. you play 30 more games than the competition, yeah. I can't wait for Carey Price to win it again. Uh, producer, well, not producer Jesse. Here you're just Jesse. Jesse. Uh, Leonard last year played 46 games. Bishop played 46 games. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So one more game than yeah. 45. Whoa. That was true. Me. And how many did Vasilevsky play? Uh, 53. But he also, the Lightning uh, tied the NHL record for wins in the oh, season. Oh, you know? well, there's that. There's I like, think he was also hurt. For a chunk of it, so he probably would have played. More. He had thirty nine wins, fifty three games. Yeah, he's Vesna. Come, come yeah. on now. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of the crown, speaking of it, Adam, what's the uh, what does Crown Royal always say? Live generously, life will treat you. Why well. not live generously? Oh, what is more generous? I don't know, Jesse. Than giving than... someone the crown every week? No, <laughs> that that's absurd. <laughs> I don't give anybody the crown. I award the crown to right. the person most deserving. Right. right. Okay. Correct. Sure. Yes. Of Adam, what does Crown Royal always say? Live generously, and life will treat you royally. William Nylander mm. is the most generous Toronto Maple Leaf. Why is that? For the 2020 All-Star Game, you can vote in Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, Morgan Riley, and John Tavares. On wow. that list of four Leafs is not William Nylander. Mm. Wow. The very generous Swede from Calgary gave up a slot on this year's All-Star Game wow. to his four teammates. And I am giving him this royal crown. I am treating him royally for being so generous as to not put his name on the ballot for this year's All-Star game. Wow. You know, Thank you, William. Typical Canadian kid just making sacrifices. Selfless. Wow. Absolutely. Selfless is how you define William Nylander. And after I a, think after a nothing game, it's amazing that you came up with that. You must have had that one how saved. How dare you? He had a nothing game. <laughs> and we're not, they weren't that uh, excuse me. Excuse <laughs> I'm me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you not live by the ethos that Crown Royal has put upon us? I mean, I try to. I one try person to. is doing it. And by giving know. up the slot on the All Star battle wow. to yeah, his what, four teammates. What is it if you and live Freddy's generously? And Freddie's not on the freaking All Star slot. Uh, no, no. If if you live generously, you'll question your friend's judgment. Is that, <laughs> is that the smoke in there? Right? <laughs> I might be. Huh? Maybe. Maybe. Wow. Wow. By the way, speaking. Oh of, yeah, I think you can vote for Freddie as well. <clears throat> but he was under goal. Didn't look at it. <laughs> Mitch Marner still leads this team in assists. Goofy. Goofy. Having a bad year. Yeah. Well, because you didn't get enough ones that counted, though. No, five, yeah, because five on five is what counts, right? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I don't know. Um, hey, that's Who Wore the Crown for this week. Brought to you, as always, by uh, Crown Royal. Next time the puck drops, why not live generously? Why not? And treat your friends to a Crown Royal old-fashioned. So the Leafs and Oilers last better. night. And I was very prepared to walk in today because I thought Michael Hutchinson was going to start because I was told by Twitter that Michael Hutchinson was going to start. Mm. And that I was very prepared for Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl to have um, uh, like both broken Daryl Sittler's 10 point record uh, in one game I was ready I was ready I was like this is going to happen I was ready for Steve's mentions to be a disaster because every time the Leafs play the Oilers just any time Steve tweets about hockey any Oilers time fans, the Leafs exist <laughs> the Leafs have not played the Oilers until last night still tweets all season long and how was how were your mentions last night you know what Adam my mentions were great because I didn't read them. Wow. Wow. Did, when you went back to read them later, anything? Oh, no. No, nothing from Oilers. You know what? I feel... It's never good when you feel bad for your enemy. Uh-oh. This is where they want you. <sighs> I feel... No, because... They're sucking o you in. Oilers fans, they had that 7-1-1 one, one start. And I want to say they're 11-13-4 and four since. Mm-hmm. And their fans are just right. Even the, they're in a playoff spot right now. Yes. I want to say they're second in the Pacific. Yep. And they're like, dude, it's happening again. <laughs> it's happening. I'm. This is bullshit. Enjoy your two points. They were saying that before the game even started. Really? And I'm like, man, you have two cheat codes on your team. Yeah. They've just gone four games without scoring much. Yeah, but like all those games, like they made a game of it at the end, and. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Like I, I thought the Leafs forced 
a lot of mistakes out of the Oilers last night, but they do look pretty unremarkable. Like James Neal is like I liked his game last night, but he's it was he's like a grinder. If Calgary had continued their streak last night, they would now be two points up on Edmonton. Oh, but they lost. And they would be tied with Arizona. Both teams, if they'd won last night, would be tied with Arizona for first place in the division. Arizona. It's a tight division. Very tight. None of the California teams even in there. No. No. No, it's crazy, Not, isn't not it? the Sharks, who fired their coach two seconds after our last show was published. I know. Of course. Of course <laughs> they did. Um, what, from last night's game, though, obviously Tyson Berry's injured early. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what you do see is a guy like Justin Hall step up. And before Barry even got hurt, Cassian was in Hall's kitchen, like, from the first shift onward. Yeah, he wanted a piece of him. The Oilers are, like, they're a bunch of tough bastards. They are, yeah. yeah not, they got some hard hits on the Leafs. Yeah, man. That's, it's like, not a team you want to mess with too the, bad. Uh, what was it, Zach Iman behind the net when he got bowled over? He got crushed. I can't remember who that was by, but, like, they got Darnell Nurse, too, Jujar Kara. Like, they're, they're a tough team. Mm-hmm. They're a very tough team. Um, but, boy, that defense is just porous. But they've it, got talent back there. They've got talent, but all the that third line, I'm starting to worry for Kasperi Kapanen. I I don't know where he belongs on this team because that friggin' line. Uh, I call it the W line. Yeah, two oh, really man, tall it's guys. A good line. Oh yeah, they and look great. A little guy in the middle. Uh, Kerfoot soup and uh, Engvall. Unbelievable. What was your What was your something foot soup? What was it? The oh uh, uh, soup neck foot. Or neck, something. neck foot soup. Neck foot soup. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> I like it. Neck foot soup is is I think what we should call it. Yes. I don't know why we're not. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. So Kapanen's know. gone, right? Well, okay. <laughs> if you if you trade from your position of strength, which is the wings, okay. and you're confident in your speed, which I wasn't really at the beginning of the season, but knowing what Mikheyev and Engvall are capable of, and you got to shed cap. Engvall less so. But yeah, it's okay. Engvall, li- listen, okay. <laughs> listen, all right? I'm gonna start picking Engvall every week for the crown, all right? Where's Trevor Moore gonna go here too? Because Trevor Moore's back in now. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, Marinchin and somebody else was sent in. Auberg. Auberg, yeah. Auberg, yeah. Um, so I assume Timoshov is the guy who comes out of the lineup, but like Timoshov looked great. Up, he set up the dagger. All right. Yeah, he. He almost goofed it though. The, the that play, the Timoshov play, is interesting. When it was four on zero. Oh? Yeah, and he one on three. He couldn't. One on three. He, he couldn't. Or sorry, make, yeah. No, sorry. Like right before the Spezza goal, or sorry, the goat goal. Yeah. He yeah. fucked it up first, and somehow was lucky enough to get the puck back because he blew oh, a pass. The blue line. He blew yeah. a pass to the lead man. Yeah. And it was he was lucky that he got it back and was able. The one thing with Timoshov that bothers me, he just does not seem to be able to pass the puck, and it's not because he holds onto it too long. It's every time he passes, it's. I don't know where the fuck that went. Yeah. I don't know where that was going. Yeah. It's it's processing the game at that speed. Yes. It's not his ability to do anything. No, he it's can processing. Pass. Goat's like that too. Mm-hmm. Goat does not process the game as fast as he's able to move, and he's got a good shot. Can't carry the puck. No, to me. No. Uh, but Timoshov threw the brakes on. Uh, who, who's that bum over there? Oh, Connor McDavid. Yeah. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And then the pass, he, I, he McDavid thre- was losing his mind because, like, that pass can't get through. Yeah, he yep. thread it through three guys I right to goat stick. It was unbelievable. I stood up and shouted Austin because oh, it yeah. went top corner and all <laughs> I saw was the three. Yeah. I was like, that was goat? I, yeah. I couldn't believe it. And yeah. that, that's the thing that's so frustrating is that, like, Timoshov, when he does do stuff like that, you're like, wow, that's mm-hmm. great. And then most of, but most of the time you're like, what the fuck was, were you going with that? Like, and I like him a lot, but he's... He's a guy that I think still is adjusting, and I think that's okay. Yeah. Nice. But he looks like a great third line player. Though. Yeah, he does. If, if that guy's out of your top six, that's great. Yeah, if you can do little stuff like that and get a, a magical goal like that every now and again, that's fine. And and he's out of the lineup more than he's in. Again, again, this is the one thing I'll stick to. The Leafs have six NHL lines. I saw some Marley's, uh, a little bit of Marley's action yesterday. Kenny Agostino is frigging unreal. He hasn't even touched the lineup yet. Yeah. So, you look at the wings. They have a lot of strength there. I love Cappy, but that might be the move. Well, you know what Elliot Friedman said. What did he say? Because I missed this. I didn't have the sound after the game. He, I like when Elliot Friedman spitballs because it's mm-hmm. actually like it's Based coming from something. a place of uh, you know he talks to general managers all the time, right? It's coming from a place of I kind of know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so he thinks Kapanen because he's not a fit on. He just can't be. On, you, on his off wing. You can't put him in the top six. 
Yeah, because he's the right way. Not on this team. It no. doesn't work. Not on this team. No. And on another team, sure. Maybe. Yeah, 100% you could. It's just that this team is too good at mm-hmm. those positions. Yeah. Like when Think about what happens when Marner comes back. Yeah. Love him. Love him on the third line. Love him on the penalty kill. You can't put him on the top six. No, you can't. You just can't so, do it. If they were to trade him, Elliot Friedman suggested that it would open up a spot for them to trade Tyson Berry as well. Whoa, okay, so let's just, are we just going to nakedly say the St. Louis Blues here? Like, is that the move now? Well, I don't know. I, I He suggested, Elliot Friedman suggested Adam Larson for Kasperi Kapanen. Straight up? One I don't one? I don't believe it was straight up. He was just spitballing. He's like, I wonder if there's a fit there with, you know, some sort of deal worked Adam out. Adam Larson. Because he's, you know. Mm. Cap control. I mean, because because imagine of, Kapanen. It's because of the emergence of Justin Hall and the fact that that Trevor Moore and Pierre Engvall and all these guys have have emerged as good players. Right. Kapanen, Kapanen's cap makes sense, and if you bring in a guy like Larson, it's a comparable cap. For instance, he was just spitballing again. Sure. But a right-handed shot guy who probably could play the role he's supposed to play, which is probably like you pair him with Muzzin. You imagine that's a pretty mean second line of defense. It's not bad. You, you or imagine, third line, whatever you want to put him. Imagine dry sidle McDavid Kapanen. Oh, terrifying. <laughs> oh, my God. The speed would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, Zach Cassian would be so pissed. <laughs> oh, I know. No, so that's you keep him there. and But then even like, uh, who was their second line center last night? I can't remember because they have Nuge on the wings now. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember. But, you know, you have all of a sudden you have either Nuge in the middle with Kapanen or you have your two wingers are Nuge Kapanen. Maybe that gives you an extra winger so that you can finally do what I've been saying to do, which is have McDavid dry saddle Nuge. Can't do that. I don't know. I don't know. There's there's something there. But I don't want to pay Adam Larson four point one six 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 million dollars next year. It's two year deal. Is it's, it he's so not it's a, this year or next? Yeah. Here's the thing. He's good. He's very good. The problem is is who he was traded for and yeah. who he's been playing for. Adam okay. Larson is a good defenseman in the right in Is the he right a $4 setting. million dollar defenseman? Yeah. For I, sure he's a $4 million defenseman. I, I think, think so. I think there's something there to the idea that he might get traded because Shirelli couldn't. Shirelli was handcuffed to the idea that, well, I traded Taylor Hall for this guy. Ken Holland doesn't have to answer for that trade. No, he doesn't. So all he's got to do is do <clears throat> the best he can possibly do for the Oilers. And if that's the best he can get... Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. I can see that working. Okay, but are you moving Barry as well? Not for like Cap. I, so that was the interesting part. I'm not sure part. how that makes sense. Yes. So what they said was, know. what he said was, you, you trade Kapanen for the defenseman, maybe, that you're looking for, uh-huh. whatever package S- that is. Separate deals. Yeah, and then Barry goes to somebody for a backup goalie. You call Arizona, who I think <sighs> Chalmerson's out for the year. Uh, uh, and then and then you say... Ranta? I mean, they're probably gearing up for a playoff run. They want both goalies, but they probably could use some offense on their defense, right? Ranta makes far too much money. I thought I thought he was still on that like one and a half million. No, he's dollar making contract. a lot of money. He makes over four. He makes mm-hmm. like what Larson's making. Or you find you find someone. You find some goalie that you know you. Well, and then the rumor was Taylor Hall is supposedly going to Arizona, and I'm like, that conversation can't happen without a goalie coming back. Well, and people are right. like, there's no way that the, that Arizona trades one of their two goalies, and it's like, well, they might have to. That's what New Jersey needs. Here's a thought. If you're New Jersey, no, you don't. You, If you trade Taylor Hall, you're committing to tanking. Yeah. Don't get a goalie. Then you better <laughs> trade PK. Yep, you better trade PK, but do not trade for a goalie. You're trying to go for the first overall pick here. Right. And you're going up against Detroit. Oh, it's a heavyweight <laughs> battle of the ages. The New Jersey Devils, Detroit Red Wings. Neither team can stop a goddamn beach ball. <laughs> it's, uh, man, it's a really strong top five this year, too. So Detroit, really- who's won two in a row. Tuna, and thank you, Detroit. They beat the Habs. Yes. So the Leafs do don't have the first round pick this year, but maybe they have Kisperi Kapanen. Maybe that's what happens. I don't know. Although in the playoffs, man, I'm just telling you, depth is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they have guys, but like Kapanen's kind of a dick. And like, like so is Trevor Moore. Yeah, that's true. But like I've been suggesting like trading a guy like Kerfoot because it can make some sense. And then I think about like playoff hockey and I'm like no I think I'd actually really like him I like her foot yeah I do too yeah. people are hard on the, it, they're hard on him and they're like well he doesn't have all the positive the positive underlying stats well he had his face reconstructed mm-hmm. number one and number yeah. two you know that on every team there's gonna be somebody who has some negative numbers it's well, not and, and he was humanly possible to have everybody 
I soured on him a bit when um, under Babs. Yeah. When, when well, yeah, but when they moved him to the wing, and I was yeah. worried. I was worried that it was more permanent, but I think it was just yeah, his face. He looks right. good as a third line center. Yeah, he does. I Especially feel like, between those two. Yeah, that I feel like that's his game. role, and he plays it well. Yeah. And Engvall's not coming out of the lineup. No. Sorry, Jesse. He's not coming <laughs> out of the lineup. But whatever. Mikheyev looks like a new player mm-hmm. now. Yeah, I feel like sure they got him back. Wow, doesn't he? He had, he didn't score a goal for twenty two games. That guy. Wow. Yeah. Man, it's an interesting little team, man. It is. And then you look at the defense, and it's literally just a bunch of tires. Well, then that's what you do. Smoldering. You you because Justin Hall's been great. Yep. Found money. So then, well, I then, didn't have him making the team. I mean, remember even, remember we were jacked. For, hey, Dave Haxtell has a relationship with Jordan Schmaltz, and that can work out. <laughs> Pain. But here's the thing: if if you're looking at the team and 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 saying like, look, Tyson Berry could really benefit somebody. Um, cause I, I mean, do we still, regardless of the injury last night, do you think he's fitting in? Not really. He had the three and three and that was super cool, but like the Leafs should have been devastated without him. There's just too many shifts where I don't see it. We need to get Riley a freaking partner. Mm-hmm. We need to get him a partner. What did you think in him and Dermot? Uh, well, Sheldon Keefe didn't like it too much. No. I th- I think it's fine, but I'm not certain Dermot's ready for that. You get, I know it would take the sun and the moon to get it to happen. I won't let go of my dream of Alex Petrangelo. But you imagine Riley Petrangelo. Come That's on. nice. Do you, yeah. But why why would St. Louis, who just won a cup yeah. and who are, are poised to potentially channel, challenge for another one, trade their captain? Because they have, well, I don't know why they would trade him in particular, but they got Colton Pareko locked up. They just acquired and locked up Justin Falk. For, Which was weird. I didn't get that one. Yeah, some weird reason. Unless you want far and away the most expensive right side in hockey. Because, I mean, if Barry was going to get eight times eight, what the hell is Petrangelo getting? Right. Um, so do you trade him? I don't think the Blues can afford him. They can't afford to extend him. Why wouldn't you keep him as an own rental then? And go for another cup? Yeah. It's a great idea. They could definitely like, do tell it. Tell me how they would, why it would help them. I don't understand. Or, or you get a really good winger in Kapanen. You get a decent right-handed guy who is maybe going to leave at the end of the year in Barry. But like at least you get something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying those two and that's Man, it. Man, if, if, if Dubas, if that's what he does, he better extend Petrangelo. And yes. is Petrangelo a guy you want to extend? He's like, what, 29, 30? Well, he's not a guy. He's a guy you want to extend. He's not a guy you want to extend for eight years. Who, which, which is, is gonna, what he's going to get. Yeah. Because he's Alex freaking Petrangelo. Yeah. That's it's a really interesting Pareko one. Listen to us. The, we're trading the whole damn team. They looked great last night. Pareko would be the guy I'd want. And not because of his ceiling's not as high, but he's got the he's got the contract. I, he I don't think he's available. That's the thing. Oh, yeah, he might not. I think because he's the younger Pietrangelo. Um, if it's February 23rd. Which is the day before the NHL trade deadline. Is it? Yes. Okay. That's the 24th. What do you think the Leafs do? If you had to predict the Leafs trade deadline moves right now, what would they be? Well, I I'm, think I'm hoping they're buyers. I think for <laughs> sure they're going to buy, obviously. But I think they're going to get another right shot defenseman, and they're going to get a backup goalie. Kyle Dubas, you know, like, love him or hate him, uh, and I don't know why you hate him at this point, um, has always gone out and got what the Leafs obviously need. And a lot of GMs don't do that. And he makes forward-thinking moves. Like yeah. Like Muzzin last year, but, and now he's still on the Leafs, and right? The, yeah, the Muzzin move was really great because, it, you know, you get him for 18 months rather than than just, you know, the, the playoffs. Exactly. Um, I bet the guy that, that Kyle Dubas has in his mind is a guy that's never been brought up. Probably. Um, and, I, I, you know, he does trade. Like, Tyson Berry was sort of a peripheral guy, maybe mentioned a couple years ago in connection to the Leafs. But he was never like, it was never like, wow, the Leafs are in on Berry. And he wasn't their top pick. They wanted Brody, supposedly. Oh, yeah. Well, or was it him? Kadri nixed the deal. That's yep. the reason they didn't get him. Yeah. I think he, right. yeah, at least one. At yeah. least one trade, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting thing, but I think the Leafs will get a backup goalie. And I think they for sure they have to. are going to get another right shot defenseman. The question is the style, right? Because mm. you got if you're going to go out and target the right shot defenseman, unless Justin Hall is Morgan Riley's partner. Um, mm, well, because he's Muzzin's partner, right? And that's essentially their, I don't know, it's their top pair so right now. So you're going and getting a guy who, like Jake Muzzin with Drew Doughty, 
you're looking for the Jake Muzzin of the right side. You're letting you want a guy a guy who can. He's got one year after this one, maybe. Well, not even that, but who just playing style can be as steady as possible while Morgan Riley goes and does Morgan Riley. Yeah, and a lot of whispers online too that Muzzin looks like he's battling something. Riley all year we've been saying he's battling something. You you can't make a rental move. It's got to no. be something substantial. And Muzzin hasn't looked the best, definitely His recently. Making. Yeah, it's so weird. Like I, he gives the puck away a lot. I notice he likes to flip it out to center ice a lot yeah. for no reason. I know that just, really bugs you. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> he'll just get the puck in the defensive zone, just flip it back. And, well, and it's there, the opposite of how the Keefe is trying to make them play. And there were a couple That's why plays last <laughs> night where he got the puck out of danger, out of immediate danger, yes. but like that puck had no chance of leaving the zone, let alone the other team's possession. So he was basically just sort of passing the buck. Right. You know what I mean? He's... Like, okay, not my problem. Mm-hmm. Now someone else go get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he plays hot potato with the puck. Yeah. yeah. I shouldn't look at... <sighs> Is Justin Hall the best defenseman on the Leafs right now? Playing the best, yes. Yeah. Skill-wise, far from it. No. It's Morgan yeah. Riley. Mm-hmm. But playing the best in terms of the last night, yeah. I just... It's so nice for him to be playing for a coach who plays him. <laughs> <laughs> I Man. Yeah. There are so many co- uh, players who, like, overcame Mike Babcock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's number one. He's number one even more so than Levo. Austin Matthews is up there. You think? They, see, they seem like they didn't have a good relationship. If you look into right. now all of the, the meetings that they had to have, him not telling him about the incident, him not telling anybody in the organization Which about the incident, the it just seems like they had a terrible relationship. And But the difference is Matthews hasn't reached another rung. Like Justin right. Hall has. I'm everyone's on Matthews right now. I'm, yeah, you know what? Austin Matthews but, really needs to get on it. <laughs> no, well, no, no. To rise to Justin Hall's but the, level. the difference is eleven <laughs> games, top pair defenseman yeah. versus great and then great. Do you think Austin Matthews can one day be as good as Justin Hall? I hope so. I me too. If I'm he hoping. works hard enough. Yeah. He's got time. He's not as old as Justin Hall. No, no, he'll get He's time. Here's a question. Time. He's got only five years. <laughs> Here's a question. Do the Leafs trade? Jake Muzzin. I'd look into it. That's interesting. I'm not sure he's the greatest fit, to be honest. If he if you trade Jake Muzzin, CC hops into his role. No, because CC's a righty. I oh, would not true. be opposed to the Leafs blowing their whole defense. <laughs> I want I want to see Muzzin, Barry, and CC all trade <laughs> <laughs> by February. Well, and speaking of, someone's got to come up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is Marinson? So they sent Marinson down. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So Barry's not on LTIR yet, then, mm-hmm. or IR or anything. Not yet. Um, who comes up? I don't think you can throw Marinson in Barry's role and be like, "Now go do Tyson Barry things." Well, Marinson's down, yeah. So it's got to be who's coming up. I think Timothy Lilligren is the answer. Why? Why is everybody assuming Sandin when Lilligren's the right-handed shot guy? So, yes. Yes. I mean, people, have we forgotten about this guy? He's a pretty good player. He put up some really good numbers as an 18-year-old in uh, the AHL. I am obsessed with Rasmus Sandin myself. I'd like to see them both up at some point. But you need one guy. Why would you not choose the right-handed guy? Yeah, I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. Both those guys are on the team next year, right? I think so. Probably by the playoffs. Maybe that's... There's like your mo- maybe there's your move right there. I Maybe you move... The, the defenseman for the goalie, and then you bring up Lilligren. I feel like we're just in the same situation we were, like, sort of in the summer, where you look at the team and you go, what the hell is going on? It's not done. <laughs> no, it's definitely yeah. not. That's clear. It's not done. It feels like it's never done, but I guess that's hockey. No, but yeah, there's a, um, I mean, with I think Babs was the biggest piece that needed to go, honestly. Yes. I think that was a lot of the team that looked out of place has sort of come together since he's left. Now you get to figure out what the hell this team is. Right. And the problem now is that Tyson Berry's injured and you don't know how long. It's how do you, how, what a I, season. I know. I know. <laughs> like every time. Every time. It, but okay, let me ask you Did you know this. the Leafs are doing it on purpose? If the Leafs do... <laughs> guys are getting hurt on purpose because of the cap. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. According yeah, yeah. to who? Yeah, did you know? Oh, just yeah. the internet. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. They stay out a little longer and help the cap situation a little longer. The Illuminati. Little yeah. Alex Jones was talking about it. Yeah. Wait, no, no way. Did people actually do that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, people think it's a thing, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Tyson Berry, the Leafs took Tyson Berry out of the lineup. 
to get Trevor Moore back. <laughs> <laughs> because they couldn't send Pierre Engvall down? Yep. Something like that. You know, they could, right? That is some um, flat earth, random nonsense <laughs> bullshit. That is so funny. Yeah. You know Cameron doesn't believe in dinosaurs? Really? The Cameron from Dipset? No way. He doesn't believe in dinosaurs. They asked him on a podcast. Can I ask, can I ask a question? The How do we know Cameron's opinion on dinosaurs? <laughs> it's the real, a podcast. The, yeah. the hip-hop podcast. They asked him about dinosaurs, and he says he doesn't believe them. He doesn't believe they ever walked this earth. Speaking of conspiracy theories. Look at these bones, boy. He says he's seen the these bones. These fossils, boy. He's seen them in the museums, but he doesn't believe them. <laughs> what is... Okay, now next why, week, why are they we... going to have Joel Santana on and ask him what he thinks about, like, the brontosaurus and shit? Why? What a weird world. I man. don't get How did we get here? Yeah, Lily Green should be called up. Okay, that's, that's what, what I That's what Cameron said. Also, I don't understand... <laughs> Why anyone Bye. cares what Cameron thinks about dinosaurs? Just well, we're talking about it, so it's clearly important information. Yeah, see, Adam. you could have stopped. He said, it. I, my, get, "I tuned out at Cameron thinks." Here, I don't care. Quote, <laughs> word. So they just found all these bones and glued them together. Sounds <laughs> sounds like more of a money maker to me, Cameron. You know. <laughs> and it's, he's not wrong because museums make so much money and aren't publicly funded at all. His bio now includes dinosaur truther. Uh, I'm not believing nor disbelieving. It's like there's no proof. Because they throw these big bones, pause, up in a museum and then oh be like, God. yo, these are the people that were here before us. I'm not necessarily Wait, going for that guys, one. It's like when people ask Kyrie about... <laughs> Whether you believe the Earth was flat or what does round. Cam Ron think about this? <laughs> like, if we get what? more proof on it, cool. But I'm not going off museum facts. I've been to every museum when I was young. I'm like, word. So they just found all these bones and glued them together. What would proof be, Cameron, for you to go on <laughs> Killer Mike's podcast and for him to go, Cameron, you dumbass, there are dinosaurs, and he goes, word. <laughs> Cameron, who later mistakes paleontology for archaeology, says, I wish I could be an archaeologist and be like, I found some shit. I'd be at the beach every day like, yo, look what I discovered, and just make some shit up. <laughs> Why? Why is this man who made rap that I listened to in high school talking about dinosaurs in 2019? Him. I love it. Him. How do we get here? How do we get here? Anyway. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> there you Cameron. go. Cameron. What would you pay Zach Cassian next year? Five million dollars. No. What would you pay him? Times eight. What? To be a leaf? No. To be an oiler. His contract's up. Is Zach Mike, Cassian's coach? And that was something that they were talking about on the broadcast is that Zach Cassian's deals up. And and we mentioned this last week. He's got the best he's got the best position in hockey. Best gig. Oh yeah, if you're him, you just take the discount. It's like what whatever you want to pay me. What do you want to he pay me? He can't make more than Tom Wilson, can he? I don't no. think so. No. No, but he <clears throat> can't even can he make half of what Tom Wilson Tom made? Wilson got his contract not after a good season, but something worse. A cup run. Right. So if you're Cass, let's say they offer you five years, four million per. Is that roughly fair? Is that like I'm not saying I would do it, but I'm just looking around the league. He plays with freaking McDavid. He sticks up for everybody. He's a maniac. You know he can play in the role. What does he make now? Like one point five? Zach Cassian currently makes he doesn't make a lot. I have the Washington Capitals up. Uh, 1.9. 1.9. The other problem with the Oilers, though, is, like, can they afford to pay him or anyone $4 million? Well, that's the thing, though. Like, if you're him, do you not just want to stay there and be like, whatever you can pay me is fine? Yeah. I would I would hope you can get him for 2.5 or less. Yeah. I think so. I just thought it was interesting that it was even, like, a thing. Because uh, Jonathan Willis from The Athletic was tweeting about it last night, and he said... If you can't get an extension hammered out with Zach Cassian, then on July 3rd, call him back and say, are you ready now? Oh, Basically, really? Like, like, who's going to sign? Everybody right. knows he, what Zach Cassian is. Jonathan, no. Uh, I love Jonathan Willis as a writer. He is dead wrong. You think people... No would, one in the NHL is going to offer Zach Cassian a contract? What's no, his career high in points? Off the in, top terms of of like, in terms of more than what the Oilers are going to offer. 
Uh, he didn't say that no one's going to offer him that, but he. Yeah, what, he, did. he no, said you call him back July third because he hasn't signed. Essentially, anyway. it's like if if you're if you're looking for five million bucks, you're not going to get it. That's what he's yeah. trying to say. What do you think? Oh, well, what do you sense. think his career high in points is? Oh God, twenty five. Forty two. Twenty nine. No. Yeah. Is it this year? No, he had that with Vancouver in 2014. What's he at now? What? Yeah. What's he at now? Uh, 22 points. So he'll top that. Yeah, he's going to top 29. Yeah. Well, that's but, the thing, right? You're only as good as your most recent season. That's how July 1st works. doesn't work on logic or any of that shit. But he's an unspectacular player unless he's playing with two best players in the world. Yeah. So who's mm. giving him? Nobody's giving him $5 million. I think if someone offers him... Any term longer than one year, at at least two point five million dollars, he should sign it on the spot. That's about the number two point five. Yeah, yeah. At I think that's time. what he's. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's an underratedly uh, an underrated GM who should be extremely busy, like in season. Forget the summer, Ken Holland. You can't get anyone to sign there. You're having the hardest time getting anyone to sign with the best player in the league. You got to make a move. They also need. They also need secondary scoring. Yeah. No, like they don't. Time. No. 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 Shh. They. They need. Adam. Adam, Adam. Are you. Are you crazy? <laughs> you want to destroy your mentions? <laughs> what do you? That's mean? suggesting <laughs> that literally people you've never heard of might not be good enough for a team with Connor McDavid on it. Adam, you're crazy. <laughs> that's what I said, and that's what I've been getting shit on for like two months for. Because they need. Because secondary they had scoring. a hot start. Sorry, what? Yeah, but they stop scoring and get, look at what happens. No! They can't score. Adam, you can't say that. They've had, why have they lost four games in a row? Adam! <laughs> Just wondering. That's a small sample size. What are you doing? You're right, when you compare it to how many games the Leafs lost earlier in a row. Yeah! Yeah. What about that, you Toronto cock? <laughs> or whatever? Piece of shit? Sorry. The same I'm getting Gagne. it for two months. Weirdly, has a bit of a resurgence because it feels like he's been around forever. He's he always, has been. He's <laughs> always a comeback story. Yeah, and wherever he plays, he's like, oh, Sam, Sam Gagne. He's that like, surprise comeback. Eighteen like, comeback story. Yes. His rookie season was nineteen seventy three. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> like, and yeah, and like, wasn't he playing on the Marlies last year? I, I yeah, on loan <laughs> for like an Edmonton? hour. He hasn't yeah. been able to recapture his magic from his line with Lanny McDonald and Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking crazy. I don't, man. I don't get it. Don't he get scored forty nine points with the Oilers in oh seven oh eight. It's, you know, people <laughs> forget in the Lanny McDonald trade to Calgary, Sam Gagne was part of that deal. He just wasn't the biggest name. That's Everyone insane. always forgets that. It's crazy. It's insane. That guy, <laughs> that guy was on the Oilers when they had Ben Scrivens. Like, time ago. Mm-hmm. Noted Ver- podcast guest. Ben, ben Scrivens. Scrivens right. Scrivesina. Uh, owner of the most saves in a shutout in NHL history. He has that really? record. Ben Scrivens. How, How many? Sh- How many saves? Uh, it was at least 50. F- I want to say it was 58. Whoa. No. <laughs> it was a 3 nothing shutout against the San Jose Sharks. And wow. And the Oilers got shelled the entire night, and they couldn't beat them. They just got, yeah. I, re- I told that story somewhere else recently. That's I was two uh, games working the that saves. Night. Sorry? Oh, you yeah. got two shutouts for that. <laughs> I, honestly, yeah. Jeez, that's nuts. That's an all-time record. Like that's a that's up there in the record books. That's not like last page stuff. Look it up. And it's and so many of the names on the list, like on the top ten list, are just like names from out of nowhere. You would think they'd all be like Dominic Hashik. Oh, uh, they're just random guys. Got hot nights. Yeah. I want, well, Craig Anderson's in there. I think he's one of the better names. But like, I think Glenn Healy. <laughs> Like, stop like 48 or something like that. Everybody once. has a night. Everyone, yeah. They just have a night where you will not beat me. Um, how satisfying. Very. How satisfying was last night for Anthony, not even sure if he can play hockey, Duclair. Dude. One goal, yeah. kick off the game. Second goal, beauty down the rush. Third game, or third goal, slap shot in overtime on the power play in his own building. In, on his own team, like on his old team, and Torts staring up at the sky and then walking off the bench. Like, how how great must Anthony Duclair feel right now? You if know, he never scores again, that's the capstone, right? That's the best moment of his career? Here, I got Maybe he won a cup. But let, me, let me pull up my phone, because I, <clears throat> I had all the Anthony Duclair stats from yesterday. While you do that, I will correct you. Dominic Hasek owns the record for most saves in a NHL win. Because he did it in a playoff game. No, in a win. 
This is in a shutout. In a shutout, yeah, yeah. Most yeah. saves in a shutout. Most saves in a shutout. He did. Uh, ben Scrivens owns the regular season record. Oh, Hashik! But Hashik in a playoff game had seventy saves. What? In nineteen ninety four wow. versus the Buffalo Sabers, one nothing was versus the, game. the Buffalo Sabers. Uh, no, for the Buffalo oh, Sabers. Okay. Sorry, so sorry. Was, I was, gonna say, was that one of his like three games he, with the Blackhawks? You know who was playing in that game? Who? It was Sabers versus New Jersey. Sam Gagne. Martin oh. Broder. <laughs> Sam Gagne. No way, really? Broder versus Hashik, one nothing. 70 shots on Hashik. He stopped them all. That was a playoff game. Ben Scrivens owns the regular season record with uh, 59 saves. In a 59. In a 3-0 win against the San Jose Sharks. There you go. So that where are is... Your, Stupid, ridiculous. Where are your Anthony Duclair stats? Uh, Anthony Duclair. So I was looking through his career because I remember Duclair was this like sort of breakout rookie with the New York Rangers. Yeah. And then like he sort of, he was just pinging around everywhere. And before you even knew it, he was on five teams. So here's what happened. He was drafted by the Rangers. I want to say the fourth round. That wasn't in the tweet. But his NHL debut was at 19 years old. Had a hot start, fell off, got sent to the World Juniors. I think he was on a line with Max Domi and McDavid was oh, that, that was year a cool as well. Line. Great, great year. I want to say that was when Canada had. Was like that in six, Toronto that year? It was in Toronto. Yeah. And they had like a 6 1 lead on Russia in the gold medal game. And I think they won 6 5, <laughs> something like that. Um, hot start, fell off, went to the World Juniors, won gold, sent back to junior after that. But the problem was he had played 18 games, so he burned a year of his ELC. Um, he was involved in a huge trade to Arizona that brought Keith Yandel to the Rangers, I believe. He scored 20 goals in his first season with the Arizona Coyotes in his first full NHL season. Then he followed it up with a mass season, had a little bit of NHL time or sorry AHL time. The next season was better, but then he got traded to Chicago. Didn't really work out. He got let go. He went to Columbus. That obviously didn't work out. John Tortorella literally said he couldn't play hockey, <laughs> got traded to Ottawa, and became God. God. And if you look at his career... Hasn't he always produced? The Yeah, like he really had the one subpar season in Arizona, and from then it was... If you just piece together all his like little quarter, half seasons that he's had with teams, I think the problem with him... And... I was sort of saying this uh, about... I was comparing it to Connor Brown as well. Because mm-hmm. the Sens have a few guys who they tried to make them into, like, pluggers. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Tortorella wanted out of Duclair. And he couldn't do that. He's not a plugger. And Connor Brown on the fourth line for the Leafs, I think he could do that, but he was making too much money. And you make him a first-line player like he's been his entire life. And weirdly, he's able to do it. So I just think the Ottawa Senators are finally allowing Anthony Duclair do the thing that he does. You know what I mean? Well, He's got one fewer goal than Austin Matthews, and it's not even an insult to Matthews. It's just Duclair's been frigging ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Scores a shitload of goals, man. He does. Well, and it, it, it does sort of make me wonder, too, like this whole idea of getting to the NHL and converting these players to players they've never been before. And you wonder how reasons why so many of them can't do it right and it's like well that's not what they do so don't ask them don't acquire that player and have them do something that they objectively cannot do and then say um oh he can't play hockey like the, that was the thing that bothered me about the tortorella quote at the time was that here's a super skilled guy and you're asking him to not play that role yeah so don't have him in that role that's on you you're not setting him up to succeed well and it and it goes so far back to like it's i think it's circumstance right like mm-hmm. if if the rangers don't bring him in too early. If they don't burn a year of his ELC, do they even trade him? You know, because I got to think part of what enticed Arizona is they saw the first little bit of his first season and they go, well, he can play in the NHL. We've seen him play in the NHL. He's maybe not ready now, but he will be next year. And then scores 20 goals with them and all of a sudden he has a slow next season. And I think there was injury in there too. And then he's some journeyman. And I go and I look at his hockey DB page. He's twenty four. Right. He's younger than Ilya Mikheyev by his, like a full uh, year. His QMJHL uh, season, where he had ninety nine points in fifty nine games. That's fun. But I look at that number and I go, 
Sidney Crosby had 168 points in 62 games. The QMJHL is really good. <laughs> Here, so Jesse, is, is 99 points in in 59 games even good? No, go look at Mario Lemieux. Have fun with that one. Go look at Mario Lemieux's Quebec League stats. Oh, outrageous. Outrageous. This, there was a great Dave Poulin story where, because uh, I think he was captain of the Flyers when Lemieux was getting scouted. And uh, I want to say the Flyers were visiting Quebec City and Lemieux's team, whoever he played for, they were um, in town. And asked the scouts, hey, so you saw Lemieux yesterday? Yeah. What would you think? Oh, I wasn't impressed. <laughs> How many goals do you have? Six. <laughs> it was because he couldn't play defense. Yeah. Could he? Oh, yeah. He, he didn't play, play defense. defense. Well, well, like it's two-way games. It's, uh, in 70 games, this is his final year in the QMJHL, in 70 games he had 133 goals. <laughs> 100... <laughs> Goals! Goals. 149 assists. Wow. For a total of 282 points. If he Man. played like a, one and a half more <laughs> games, he could have hit 300. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's he, absurd. Wh- say that like, one more time. 133 goals, 149 assists. That's 282 points in 70 games. And in the playoffs, 14 games, 52 points. In 14 games in the playoffs, he almost had 30 goals. He had 29. Literally what? That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's fun. So anyway, uh, Anthony Duclair, um, I know he's having this amazingly hot season. Uh, I know he's got a high shooting percentage. Maybe he'll never do this again. Mm. But I can't help but look through his career and go, this isn't a mystery. Yeah, he's always been good. I th- I think it's just circumstance for some guys, and he's just gotten pinged around. It's too bad, but uh, man, what a great night for him! And you got to think, because right. DJ amazing. Smith after the game was like, "Yeah, I don't think he thought about that. Like, he's not that kind of kid." And then Anthony declares, "Like, yeah, no, it felt pretty good." <laughs> <laughs> like, who, like, yeah, no, like, fuck that guy. Who does DJ Smith think like, he's fooling? Of course that felt good. Are you kidding me? That's his job. No, stop. That's his job. No, What's stop DJ condescending Smith? to me, man. Stop <laughs> treating me like I'm stupid. Come on, well, uh, DJ. We know it felt great. Feel great. Well, Feel something. What's DJ Smith supposed to do? I'm sure Eat it, felt- it towards you suck. <laughs> I'm sure it felt great for him. Oh, yeah. That's all he has to say. No, I don't know if he's not the kind. What do you mean that kind of kid? A human fucking being? It's ridiculous. These guys can feel. <laughs> it's okay to admit that. Anthony Duclair fucking blew the doors off John Tortorella's night. It was amazing. The Dorts is still thinking about it today. It's great. It'd be great if... Just Brady Kachuk spoke for him. Was just like, eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a goal. Woo! Hey, you know who's not going to make the playoffs? Uh, who's that? Montreal Canadiens. You, you don't know that. Oh, I don't think so. There's another team. Bit of a hot start. and Woo. Now, if Oiler fans were Canadians fans, then I would say you're on to something. Now, you can look at Canadians and say, hey, listen, guys, they're only 4-5-1 and one in their last 10. They lost one. But they did go on that, what, seven or eight game losing streak? Something like that? Some crazy. Eight. They do currently sit in a playoff I know. I and just you're betting that you don't, you I don't, don't believe think, in the team? Guys, no? I think Carey Price is having another one of his off years. I don't think, unless he turns it around, and mm-hmm. that's all it comes down to is Carey Price. Like, it doesn't Basically. matter how many goals Max Domi scores in comparison to last year. Carey Price... At a 292 goals against average and a 905 save percentage is not going to get the Montreal Canadiens into the playoffs. He needs to be Carey Price from 2016, 2017, the last time he had a save percentage over 920. Oh my God. When? 16, 17. Last year he had a 918, but they didn't make the playoffs. Least fans right. will tell you 16, 17 was a long time ago. It uh, was. I'm telling you, Carey Price needs to have a save percentage over 920. For the Montreal Canadiens to make the playoffs. And there is a very oof, there's a very interesting little race going on in the Atlantic Division right now. So stop looking at the wild card. Philadelphia, or last I checked anyway, um, what is it right now? The second wild card is occupied. Yep, still by Philadelphia. They're on pace for like 100 plus points. Yep. Oh, well, how, how are the hell are the Leafs ever going to get that? Here's the problem. Uh, Boston is in first. Yeah. I don't think anyone in the division is catching them. Nope. Buffalo is actually fairly comfortably in second. Mm-hmm. 
Although they've played more games than a lot of teams. They've played as many games as the Leafs. They're three points up in the Leafs. Montreal is in that third spot. They're currently on pace for 89 points. Leafs are on pace for 87. Leafs are on pace for 87, which you might groan, but that's climbing. Tampa, who is fifth in the Atlantic Division, they're actually on pace in terms of point percentage for 92 and a half, which is still way down from last year. And Florida is at 92 and a quarter. Florida, by the way, were second last week at this time in the division. That's I ridiculous. Yeah. And Ottawa, 30 points in 33 games. They're good for them. They're in the conversation. Good for them. They're not going to make the playoffs, but good for them. I mean, but that division, it. we're thinking it's Boston, Tampa, Toronto. We were thinking, but Man, like, but I, I not, still think it's going to end up that way. Yeah. It's Buffalo. Buffalo would have to go on some sort of losing streak. I don't think Jack they Eichel's would. one of the uh, highest players Toronto in the league Toronto and Tampa right now. are not that far behind, and Tampa's got games in hand on Buffalo. Toronto yeah. doesn't, but it, but Tampa's got three games in hand on Buffalo. Buffalo Listen, okay. just has to play at the pace they've played in like the last fifteen ish games. Mm-hmm. If you take away that hot start, they've kind of looked normal. If they just play that pace for the 10, rest of the season, it's fine. Uh, their last ten has looked better. If they had a little more luck in overtime, they'd be fine. Right, I think. Right, they're five one and four. So Ta- you lo- Tampa wins their games in hand. They pass Buffalo by a couple points, but then like, man, Florida, Montreal, the Leafs, like they're gonna have a tough time catching them. It's a it's a tight. That's tight a good point right about now. that. Those four overtime uh, or slash shootout losses because that's four points. You just leave to a coin flip. It's two yeah. wins. <laughs> so, two yeah. wins. It's yeah. real unfortunate. It is for them. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, but they were lucky they came away with anything at all. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I I part of me this is really weird. If the Leafs didn't make the playoffs, mm-hmm. part of me thinks. First off, it'd be a, it, it would be a disaster. Yes. But part of me thinks it would also be good to show players that have never missed the playoffs what it's like to miss the playoffs. Yeah. I get it. Like Steven Stamkos and the Tampa Bay Lightning missed the playoffs, I think, a couple years ago when he was out. And they didn't have – Ben Bishop was out, I think, or wasn't playing well. And Vasilevsky hadn't become the monster that he no is one, or was last year. No one was left on the team. Yeah, they were just decimated. And, and they, they barely still, missed it. They were one of the hottest yeah. teams in the entire league. If they had made the playoffs, they had a shot at the Cup. <laughs> yeah. They were, they were that hot. And, the, and they, they were like a point behind the Leafs. Like the, the Leafs almost, almost didn't make it. It was Connor, Connor Brown. Brown. Connor Brown doesn't tip that home. And then the Leafs lose to the friggin' Blue Jackets the next night. Because you played McElhaney on both halves of a back-to-back because you had to. Because Freddie got hurt. Because of friggin' Tom Sestito. <laughs> You play, that's right, Mac was playing in both halves of a back. This is the <gasps> this is the sixteen seventeen season we're talking about, right? Yeah. Yes. Because uh, Tampa finished with ninety four points, Didn't and make. the Leafs finished with ninety five in the second wild card. Yep. So yeah, and the Islanders also tied Tampa with ninety four. points. And Tampa had more regulation oh. wins, I think. So the Leafs couldn't have even. They did forty two. Yeah. Jesus. Leafs had forty. Mm. Oh, Connor, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Connor. And Jake Gardner, by the way, was the one who shot it and set Connor up for the tip, which is good because Con- uh, Gardner literally thwacked the puck into his own net to give Pittsburgh the lead in the third period. Oh, I remember that entire game. It scarred into my brain. Remember the JVR goal? Yeah. Where he flicked it up <laughs> oh, to himself? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. God. Phil Ke- who scored the first goal of that game? Freaking Phil Kessel. First period. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Jesus. Part of me thinks, though, in my twisted way, that at some point, they are going to have to learn how hard it is to actually make the playoffs. They've been relatively lucky the last two years in a weak division. Um, and it, it's given strong team. Uh, and I like the way they're playing under Sheldon Keefe. And I don't hope they make the, or they miss the playoffs. I want them to make the playoffs. Of course. But if they didn't, they sure would come to camp sort of embarrassed. Eh? It wouldn't well, be the would worst so. thing in the world. No. 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 And I don't want to talk like that because what we're going to get is a bunch of losers in our YouTube mentions going, oh, you're already setting us up for the Leafs to miss it. No, I fucking <laughs> want the Leafs to make it because I want you losers to eat shit when they make it to the third round this year because I think that's where they're going if they continue this way. Oh, Adam, I you know what? I'm back on my bullshit. If the Leafs win the Stanley Cup, I'm going to be... The oh, worst person you know. Insufferable. I'm going to be just... <laughs> the worst person you know. I swear to God. Um, yeah, it's. I'm trying not to watch the standings too much. Yeah. Because t- there's so much hockey left. Mm-hmm. And I can't go by wins and losses because I like so much of what I'm seeing, even in the losses. And a couple of the losses have been 
just such a shame. Because you're like, you threw that game away. The Calgary game. Yeah. You sucked for three minutes. That happened in between the last podcast, right? So we haven't talked about that uh, at all. No, yeah, we haven't talked about that. Yeah. The the Avalanche game where like, Spezza has never done that in his career and will never do that again. And that cost them the whole freaking game. And who scored the goal? Freaking Valerie Nachushkin on the penalty kill. What? Um, and then that Philadelphia game was competitive, 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 shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so even in yeah. the losses, I'm seeing so much that I like. And now you look, though, they've won three of four. Mm-hmm. They beat the Oilers. Always fun. Calgary game they threw away in the garbage. Vancouver was a really fun win. And before that, you beat the reigning champs in their barn. Why aren't you happy? That's six of eight. That's great. Hooray! Oh, they're on pace for 87. They weren't before! <laughs> That's better than it was. They were on pace for fucking... 80, I think. I don't know, right. 50. That's how it works. <laughs> math. It wasn't looking good. We now go to Sam Gagne for our math lesson or whatever. Um, <laughs> so do you think... Coming up. Question for you guys. Do you think Peter DeBoer was fired because Martin Jones and Aaron Arendelle can't be fired? Yes. Martin Jones has been bad for like three years now. Doug Wilson owns, has to own that, right? Yeah. Instead of firing the sun and moon to get Eric Carlson, why not go get another goalie? Right. Like an actual goalie. Right. Hmm. Guy with several severed tendons starting goalie. I don't know. I think I'm going to start Aaron Dell tonight. <laughs> yeah, they're. Uh, it's crazy that we're looking at the Pacific Division and everything going on there, and the sh- Sharks aren't in that picture. The Oilers have been terrible since their hot start. Mm-hmm. The Flames were terrible until they're hot now. Mm-hmm. And the Coyotes are comfortably in first. Sharks aren't in that picture. Yep. That's yep. wild to me, man. Yep. Wild what year me. was their Stanley Cup run? 2016. 16-17. 16-17. Last time Carey Price had a save percentage over 920. <laughs> no, it was 15-16 because the Sharks had James Reimer. Oh, yeah. And, and, and? Roman Polak. That's right. Yeah. And for the bonus round. Oh, Nick Spalling. And. Oh. Oh, my God. No, no wait. Wasn't even... Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. No, I think Nick Spalling's who you're thinking of. Was it not Dan Winnick as well? Or did he go to Washington? No. No. Yeah. Yes. He was Washington. Shit. Sorry. Okay. So Nick Spalling, anyway. Yes. You got the bonus point. Yay. <laughs> I love bonus points. Oh, shit. My tape's coming off. Oh. What is Mark Bergevin going to do? If for the fourth time in five years, the Montreal Canadiens have not made the playoffs. I've liked so many of his moves, Mm -hmm. but like, dude, it's the Montreal Canadiens. At some point, you got to look at, I don't know. I'm going to stop talking about how the Habs need to, at some point, look at firing Mark Bergevin because they'll just never do it. But if you look at each trade in, in the vacuum itself, he hasn't lost. I don't. I can't pick point Even out the a trade he's lost. Trade looks better now. He lo- It looks like he won the Shea Weber trade. Ca- yes. Like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and it, the yes. Domi Galchenyuk. Um, even he even got value out of Thomas Tatar for Pacioretty. He's drafted right. incredibly well. Like the shitty thing is, if he is fired, the Habs are going to get better, mm-hmm. and it'll be because of him, and he won't even get to enjoy the fruits of his labor. Right. Like Cole Caulfield is going to make the team. And, oh, man, whoever comes in, they're going to be such a genius for all they got to do is put in one of the most prolific scorers not currently in the NHL that wasn't even drafted by them. Uh, But is his job to win trades or to win the Stanley Cup? You know what I mean? Like, you can win every trade. Dude, win. That's that's the shitty thing about this business. You just have to win. Bergevin traded Andrew Shaw. For a second, a third, and a seventh, like that's that's these really are, these are good. great moves, and it's just not. I think it's just bad luck, right? Yeah, but like th- two or three consecutive years, the Habs have had like some of the most cap room in the entire league, which and, is ridiculous. And he hasn't used it, and we keep going. Oh, every year Montreal's gonna do this big move at the deadline or this off season, and yeah. use all that cap space, and then he never uses. And it. And they never do. Like, yeah. give some guy who deserves two million. A four million dollar contract for one year, like just to have them, mm-hmm. man. Like you yeah. have the money, spend it, spend it. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it with that team, man. And also, uh, you know what sucks for the Leafs who are looking for a backup goalie is that Montreal is Montreal in in their division because those guys have like four goalies right now. Mm-hmm. They got Price, obviously, Caden Primo, who is now 
quickly becoming an option for them. Keith Kincaid, who's in the minors, and Charlie Lindgren. Charlie Lindgren's a guy who I would love. Be neat if you could do like a three way trade or something, so that way you don't have to deal with them. <laughs> it's, it's not happening. No, it's like, definitely. They not. would never help them out. I guess it's really it's Georgiev, right? That's yeah. that's got to be their main target. I don't know. I don't know how they get anybody else. Unless there's some way you move CC and then you have the 4.5 freed up and then your options have like tripled. And then I was looking at the league standings and the Leafs are like neck and neck with the Rangers somehow. The Rangers are actually ahead of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're the Rangers, it's just like uh, I want to say Elliot last weekend was like, why would the Pittsburgh Penguins help the Leafs? Why would the Rangers help the Leafs? Right. If they're battling for the final wild cards or a wild card spot. I know they're rebuilding, but like they're not stupid. They want to, if they have a chance at making the playoffs, they'd like to. Someone <laughs> mentioned, uh, speaking of the Rangers, Lundquist. And at what point is he the old guy and you trade him? Or does he just finish out his career? There's I think he eight, stays in New York. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see that happen. He's got an $8.5 million cap it. Right. He's Do you retain getting... on that? Yeah, but then. If somebody gives you assets, you'd have to retain half. And at that right. point, he's still making four and a quarter, and now you're paying four and a quarter against the cap for a goalie who's not on your team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's well. <coughs> if you look at it, if you if you look at it as a deadline move next year, because then that's the final year of the contract. Then the money doesn't matter if you just got the cap yeah. space. In, I don't. I is, Feb- that, is that what he's got left? Next year's is last year's going to be UFA after that. Doesn't in February, uh, I would think so. Just uh, he probably doesn't want to. There's no a young clause, and exciting yeah. team. I don't think he wants to leave, and I know no. that they've got that other goalie. I keep forgetting his name in the minors. Georgiev. Oh, not um, Georgiev. They have a couple. Damn it! I forget. Or something. Who? Shosturkin. Sh- Igor Shosturkin. Yeah. Shishman. And Adam Husak. Husak. Now H- yeah. Husak apparently is not as close as Shosturkin is, but they want to get a look at him. Shosturkin. Shosturkin. Igor. And if you're New York, you probably look at this and go, well, I mean, a little more seasoning in the AHL can't hurt, but can you hold him back for 18 more months or more? And, like, what if Lundquist says at the end of this contract, I still want to play, and you still think he can? Are you the Rangers just going to let him go? It is a business, yes, Hmm. but are you going to let him go? Or if he signs for league men as a backup, is that the worst guy to have behind somebody like Yorgiev or Sisterkin or whoever? I still... I, that's why I, was, I think I, I honestly think a, a Leafs Rangers trade makes a lot of sense. I keep could. Going back for to which that. one? Georgiev. Georgiev would be nice, but it, and we know he plays well in that building. Right. I'll throw out another name um, because the Capitals have an interesting situation where Braden Holtby is their starter, but Ilian, uh, Ilya Sim, Samsonov, I think, um, is a backup and he's playing well. Mm-hmm. He's playing really well. Um, their backup from last year has been kicked out of his job by Samsonov, uh, Phoenix Copley. From North Pole, Alaska. Wow! Really? Yes, I'd be interested. <laughs> I'd be interested fun. in yeah. Uh, give him a shot. I don't. What What are his uh, stats in the minors? Like? Listen, he was decent last if year. If he literally won a game, it would be an upgrade. <laughs> Listen, Michael Hutchinson. Where's the lie? Michael Hutchinson's got one more shot. They got a back to back coming up. The game on Tuesday against Buffalo is enormous. Is then he they, playing? This no, Saturday it's, it's is back to back. This Saturday, Friday. Yeah, it's got to be Saturday. Freddy on Tuesday, and then you got Friday against the Rangers. You have to start Freddy, and at home against Detroit. Against Detroit, if you can't win that, we're done here. We're done. And then the next home we? and home, yeah. No, what are we? Done. <laughs> done. Uh, done. <laughs> Phoenix Copley, yes, of North Pole, Alaska. Has an 896 in 15 games for the Hershey Bears. Oh. Yeah. That's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah, we've taken their closer look now. <laughs> okay. Well, I threw his name out there. Yeah. Let's yeah, you did. Now we know he exists. Yeah. Uh, Listen, you got to give some so to get some. <laughs> what team hasn't Taylor Hall been traded to? Hasn't? Um, Tractor Chalabinsk. Uh, Rachel's Raiders. Ah, true. True. Two. Did not go to Rachel's Raiders. <laughs> um, I can't afford to get bumped down a line. No. no, I don't want Taylor Hall taking my ice time. This is trash. No. So, Arizona gotta... apparently is the front runner. <laughs> How runner. dare we? How? Which is when nice. When did Arizona become disgusting? I like, well, it was bound to, it should have happened three years ago. They've had talent for a long time. And they, the funny thing is, they've been in a tough division. They though. have to shed salary. They do? They have to. Dude, go look at Cap Friendly. They're yeah. on top. Great. I know. It's unbelievable. That's why, so if you're the Devils, this, this is a tough thing. So I was saying 
not to get Ranta because you're obviously gunning for the first overall pick. But if you're trading with Arizona, they need you to take money. They kind of need you to take Ranta, I would think, Mm -hmm. for the Devils. You maybe convince them to sign with you long term. He's been dying for a shot at being a starter ever since. Remember he was, uh, there was the goalie controversy like five (laughs) studios ago. Um, when he was, he took over for Henrik Lundqvist for like two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when he broke uh, Lundqvist, he had, he had some sort of streak. Like shutout record or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Then he goes to Arizona, yeah. kept getting hurt, but it's okay. They're putting him in a position to succeed. They got Darcy Kemper behind him. Oh, who, by the way, is God now. Mm-hmm. So away he goes. But I think he could work in a tandem with Mackenzie Blackwood, who I'll continue to go to bat for. But there's, I, I don't know. Taylor Hall and Phil Kessel on the same team. I I want to see it. It'd be a lot of fun. I just don't know how it works out. Yeah, I, I want to know what goes back the other way. I'm interested. Well, rant is rant is the NHL part, but like, but all you, the prospects and picks. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot. Uh, Sven Berchi is on waivers for the Canucks. They just for whatever reason that guy just cannot seem to make it stick with Travis Green. Um, I wonder if that's a guy that. I mean, it's unfortunate. That's a guy. His, his contract so yeah. much, three point five. But I wonder if that's a the next Ottawa Senator. Oh boy! In the off season, won't be this year. But I wonder if he's another, if he's a Sen cast off that, like Duclair, will finally get the ice time he needs, and maybe find his game. Could be this year. Or wings. <laughs> Is Ottawa ever going to try and be good again, or are they just going to keep doing this I forever? Think, no, I think they're trying to be good now. Like, is that weird? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're not playing like a team that's trying to suck. Oh like, no! I know the players. You can't ask them to tank, but there are ways of intentionally making your team suck. Trade Craig Anderson. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy that at least could use a backup. There's a guy. Oh, you wouldn't want to trade Kasperi Kapanen to the no. Senators now. No, but Kapanen to Brown to Ennis <laughs> Pr- to Hainsey. Yeah, play <laughs> started by Hainsey. Yeah. Oh, and they give the puck to DJ Smith for his 100th win. <laughs> Zaitsev. Z- oh, my yeah. God. How many freaking... Yeah. Yo, Eugene watches some Leaf hockey. Let's just be honest. <laughs> He's bit. got the Eugene Melnick Pavilion at one of these uh, hospitals downtown. He loves the Leafs. They forgot That's defense. Not... So. But Sven Berchi's another guy for me that, like, Detroit or even if his contract were less, like, this is the problem, is that his contract is stopping a team like the Oilers from taking a shot at him. I bet Sven Berchi fits in great on the Oilers. In a third line or a second line role, it's just the money's too much. I mean, the Pacific Division's weird in that they love trading within the Pacific Division. They do, especially the Oilers. So yeah, they don't knows? have the they don't have the uh, the thing where you can't trade in. in Hi, yeah, we're your divisional rival. Will you retain you know on someone to help us? You sure. know what's super weird about the the non interdivisional thing, what? with the exception of retaining salary. People are always like, "Well, you know, when you trade a guy, you don't want to see him coming back at you the other way." Well, the other team doesn't either. But if it makes both of you better, isn't that the point? Like right. to me, it doesn't but, make sense. It, it, it yeah. is not that you should, unless unless you're retaining, unless you're trying to suck, in which case retain all the salary mm-hmm. you want. Um, I don't, I don't really understand why you don't trade within your division. Shouldn't the goal just be like drafting, get the best fucking player? Yeah, the BFG, uh, BFP, right? Yeah, best fucking I don't player. Know. Just a thought. Just there's, a thought. there's no best player available anymore. Just best fucking player. This fucking plur. Sven Berchi, I still think, and I believe that. Well, you I know, just don't think he's going to work with Travis Green. You I just know what don't Berchi think he is in Vancouver. Done. Whoa. He's done. <laughs> Sorry. Every time they send him down to Utica, though, he lights it up. Yeah. It's twenty three points in sixteen games. He's some an guy's NHL sulk. Player. Yeah. Yeah. Some guys sulk, and he's at least being like, "This is a joke to me." Right. Yeah. yeah. I he's shouldn't a, be here. He's a victim of his contract. Basically, yeah. my contract sucks. So How many more years does he have on that thing? One year. So, just this year? No, this year and next year. So one more year after. You can this. maybe find a home. Oh, for I'm him. sure you find a home for him in the off season. Yeah. I mean, he's also one of those guys, though. Don't forget who gets an enormous freaking raise because there's no escrow when you're playing in the American Hockey League. Oh. oh. And he's not making seven hundred grand. He's making three point five. So whatever he's he was paying. Three, on six, yeah. 
Yeah, probably. I'm kidding. Yeah, he, he sucks <laughs> at the <laughs> NHL level. Right, so it, the way the contract works is that if you're playing in the A with an NHL deal, the escrow doesn't apply to you? Uh, something like that, yeah. Wow. He, he, you get an you enormous You have 15% more of your money back. Well, that's like that's when, crazy. when Wade Redden got sent to the minors making $6 million. Remember that? That's when you could bury contracts with no penalty. Yeah. You got sent you to the Connecticut to whale. By the way, you should still fucking be able to do that. This is ridiculous that we can't. Wow. I, I also agree with that. I think if a guy is on your AHL team, it should there should be no cap hit. No, no cap hit at all. You should be able to sign a guy for $10 million oh, if he's no, not playing well, throw him to the, the, the AHL. big market teams. Well, like, that's why you see it's so good many for teams. The players. You what? see so many teams signing these deals that are like 1.2 something or mm-hmm. 1.3 because it's just under. What you can bury. What you can bury. That's, one, yeah, it's 1.2 you can bury, right? Yeah, like the Penguins signed Casey to Smith for three years at 1.25. And like immediately, whoop, just sent him right down to the minors. Yeah, no cap it. Yeah, because it it makes it uh, less incentive for you to claim him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's no penalty to you. Why wouldn't you do that? It if you should be. He had, uh, future. It should be. You have to go through waivers, but any contract can go down and be buried. But yeah. if another team wants to pick him up for free and just take him and take the entire contract, yeah, do it. I agree. Go ahead. But throw him in the minors if you can do that. Mm-hmm. You've got enough money for it. I'm into it. Right? I like it's it. Such I a, mean... It feels like there's such simple fixes around the league with some of the, just the way it's structured. Yeah. And they refuse remember, to do these things. remember, small market teams would be like, whoa. Mm-hmm. And I'd say to them, well, what about that ghost money you have on the cap to get you to the floor? <laughs> whoa. <laughs> what, what about what? The ghost money they have whoa. on the floor. The whoa. <laughs> Yeah, what is it, Marion Hosa? The on... ghost of Pavel Datsuk, <laughs> getting the Coyotes to yeah. the floor. Who still plays professional hockey, just not here. Yeah, Marion Hosa on the Coyotes as well, I think. Chris Pronger on the Coyotes. <laughs> and everyone on the Coyotes. <laughs> on the Coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, doesn't Ottawa have some Gabrick money on there? Oh, probably. When's the last time Marion Gabrick saw the inside of an NHL no, ring? And the Leafs <laughs> respond like, with me? a line of David Clarkson and Nathan Horton. Yeah. And... Uh, Probably Tim Gleason. I bet they're still paying him. If you're gonna do the ghost money thing anyway, (laughs) and teams are doing it, why can't you do this? I just don't get it. I don't understand. It just, you know what it does? It just (laughs) serves as concrete shoes to these general managers. That it stops them. It makes them super conservative, which they are already, and it stops fun things like the trade deadline from being fun. Yeah. Can we full time refer to it as ghost money now? It's ghost money. Ghost money. What it is? One of the most fun things in professional sports is player movement. And seeing guys swap teams. Yes. And the NHL limiting that is ridiculous. You're limiting fun. Well, and it's so frustrating. Like, again, just in life, people, they're just like, hey, you're talking about hockey. Can you explain this to me? The friggin' Clarkson trade Mm -hmm. from this summer. Like, casual fans, they don't give a shit. About the and by the way, any of you, I give a shit. None of you listening to this hockey (laughs) podcast are casual fans. You're all hardcore. Okay, get used to it. You're listening to a podcast about hockey for two hours. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's mainly about one team. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No casual fan. This isn't. Is like. This is niche. Well, who, like, you know how many people ask me this summer, but who's Clarkson going to play with? And you got to explain to them, no, he's got. He will never play again. Spooky contracts where he, he, he's a ghost. He has ghost money. He has a number in a system. Yeah. And the Leafs, wait, did the Leafs get a pick? I think the no. league, they got a pick no. or they gave a pick. I know they gave up Garrett Sparks and it's nonsense to most people. Mm-hmm. I don't like you're trying to yes, player movement is very exciting, but just you know what's exciting? Understanding. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Hockey fans don't understand what's going on and you can't blame them. You need to be they're sending out league-wide emails about how the rule works mm-hmm. to the guys who run teams. What are regular fans supposed to do? You're boned. It's this is the problem, right? And you know and why you're boned? Ghost money. That's right. I don't know. My it's new just, favorite term. Like, it just drives me nuts. But anyway, uh, let's do the press conference. The presser. S D P. The Steve Dangle press conference. David Clarkson, who played three years for the Vegas Golden Knights. How many games do you play for? Uh, let me check. Well. Uh, I believe Sam Mitchell once said, zero, zero, zero. zero. Wow. <laughs> and you know what, though? David Clarkson, I thought, was propped up by his Vegas teammate, Mikhail Grabowski. <laughs> yes. Remember Man, the that? The last time he played a game was 2015, 2016. Grabo? No. Oh, Clarkson. Clarkson. Wow. Grabo, Grabo, Grabo. Yes. Not good. That's Ghost rough. money. Woo. Wow. What do you got, Jesse? 
Do you guys got pen and paper? Oh dear. Oh, we're doing quiz? There's paper here. I got a highlighter. That counts. Does it? All right. We're doing this. I need some poppy. Oh. There you go. There's a, you can pass them half the sheet or something. I don't oh, know. man. You guys got a, you got a pen? I got yeah. a highlighter. All right. Yeah, you can sort of see what I said. Yeah, good. Let's, uh, let's Quiz take time. a look at this list. So, the game we're going to play here is players who have played over a thousand games in the NHL. Okay. There are 23 players on this list. In the NHL? Like today? Today. Active. Not in the NHL. Ever. Oh. At only 23 ever? No, no. There's over 300 ever. Uh oh no no active guys oh okay. active guys okay, I was about to we're say, doing we're doing uh current currently in the NHL do not ask me to name twenty three guys no 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 because I will leave we're gonna do currently in the NHL okay over a thousand there's twenty three guys who have played over a thousand games and what okay. I just gotta write down as many as I can no 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 what is it you're each gonna get. You're gonna. You can write down how many names you want if you think you know. You're gonna get. Uh, you're gonna get f- five guesses each, five total guesses. But you each get five questions. I can only respond to these questions yes or no. You're just trying to get five. The most whoever gets five right wins, or at least closest to five. Mm-hmm. You get five guesses, okay. and you also get five questions. So write down five guys. You can just take five guys, five guesses, or and you can also use your questions. Five active players. Five active I just players. Have to name list. five active players who are on this, who have played over a thousand games. Hmm. Okay. Actually, you might, you both might get five. Do you guys think you're going to get five, or do you yeah, want to? I have four. Do you want to up the number? I don't. I don't know this shit really well, so no, okay. I don't. Think we'll keep so. it to five then. I have four. Mm. We'll lower the questions then. You get three questions. Okay. Hmm. Each. Hmm. Mm. Are any of them goalies? Let me take a look. No. There's not a single goalie. There's hmm. not a single goalie on this list. Hmm. Hmm. Is one of them a leaf? Cur- yes. One of them is a leaf. One of them is a current leaf. I got five. Just thinking. It's a good Just question. Just thinking. Steve's got five. I got five. Mm-hmm. Let me try to do more. So wait, I've asked two questions. No, you get five. Okay. Five is the max number of points you can get on this question. All right. There if you, you want to, if you want to use your no, question. no, I don't want to be a dick. <laughs> if you want to showboat a little, I do. I always do. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Thousand games. There's 23 current? Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. There is. Active? Yeah. It's a, it's a lot higher than I thought it would be. Are any of them guys who are <sighs> retired but just haven't officially retired? No. So it's not like Justin Williams or something like that? Where... Yeah. I'm looking and I think it's good. Uh, Matt Stajan? Uh, yeah, right? I'm no. officially retired. What? You've been playing in Germany for like six years. What do you, what? Uh, shout out Kyle Grant, by the way, who sent this along. I think there's one guy. Let me just look up. That guy's a sack of crap. Him. You don't know about Kyle? Kyle Grant? Yeah. <laughs> sack of crap. Sack of crap. <laughs> um, no, it looks like all these guys are playing games. I thought there was one guy. I was just as a double check. Mm-hmm. But... Adam, where you at? I got two. You got two? You got two? I got to be honest. I don't know no, this stuff. No more blind you guesses? Three, you got three questions? Anything that'll help? I don't really have any questions. My brain's a little fried at the moment. No. <laughs> um, You're just. Are you going to go home and play video games for the first time? No, ever? I have to go home and clear out my main floor because my entire house is getting ripped apart. So. Oh yeah. Your life sounds like misery. It's misery it right now. Adam, who are your two? Spets and Chara. Those are two correct answers. Great. Ironically, on this paper, all I have written down is. Chara and Spezza. <laughs> nice. Uh, on the other piece of paper, I have Patrick Marlowe. Yes. Oh, good one. 
Joseph Thornton. Yes. Good one. And Ronald Hainsey. There was three. Wow. Mo- there was three. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Yeah. It's like most of the San Jose Sharks have done it. Marlowe and Thornton lead the list, and then it runs down. Chara, Bowmeister, Eric Stahl. Bowmeister. Dustin Brown. Ovi. I wondered about Dustin Brown. I was yeah. going to put him down, but I'm like, I thought he was scratched a lot for a while there, so I wasn't sure if he'd made it. Dustin Brown's been around a long 1, time. 1,151 games. Wow. I wonder if Drew Doughty's on that list yet. Has he made it yet? Uh, no, Drew Doughty is not on that list. Getzlaff's got to be up there, right? Oh. Yes, he is. He's okay. number 19. Adam, you you could have guessed. Come on. These t- those are two correct answers. You could add four. Whatever. Is Perry. <laughs> <laughs> is Corey Perry? Corey Perry is on that list right behind Getzlaff. Two games back. Uh, Jeff Carter is up there. Miko Koivu, Mark Edward Vlasic just hit a thousand. Bergeron, Brent Burns, Spezza, Keith Suter, Seabrook, Hamzus. Hamzus. Uh, Han- Dan. Dan. Oh, Han- Hamhus. Han- no, Han- Hamzus. Hamzus. Is Hamzus still playing in Dallas? Uh, he plays for. I saw him recently, and I was confused to see him. Give it to me. Is it Dallas? Nope. I did. Ah, I saw him recently. Who the hell is he playing for? I forget. He started his career there. Dang. He's not back in Vancouver, is he? Nope. He played in Vancouver after this team. Oh, Nashville. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So wait, you're telling me there's 23 active players who have played a thousand games. Four of them are Sharks. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the team's ancient. Yeah, it's old. Anyways. And fun. they're going to have another one with Carlson, I assume. Hmm. I mean, he's signed for long uh, enough. Unless he, they LTIR him how, at some point. I don't know if he's played that many games. He's not that old, but it just feels like he's been around for right, an eternity. Let's, he's career like games. Uh, he started the year after. He started in 74. 714. So, still three 300 games is a lot of games. Four seasons to go, to go if he yeah. wants to get there. Yeah. That's healthy, too. Yeah. Which is asking a lot. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> you like that? That was a good question. You really yeah. like that. that really Thanks, hard. Kyle Grant. My brain is just mush. Sorry, guys. All good. It's all good. good. All good. It's all good. You useless piece of... You useless piece of crap. Piece of... I think the most important part of this podcast was learning that Cameron thinks dinosaurs don't exist. <laughs> I'm going to listen to him the whole way home. Good. Dip set. <laughs> In the building. <laughs> but what does Cameron think about dinosaurs? <laughs> Let's get him on CNN right now. <laughs> Sit him next to Ja Rule. Ja Rule in politics. <laughs> that might actually be the greatest clip of all time. I can't wait. Yeah, the Ja Rule the... in politics. Yeah, 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 that might be the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I still, I still watch the Fire Festival documentary. Oh, he I, I dropped haven't... a track this weekend called Fire, where he takes no responsibility for the Fire Festival. It's in our prep for a Virgin Morning. Rappers are so <laughs> whack. Like, okay. He wrote a song explaining. <laughs> it used to be like, I live on the streets. I'm gangster and shit. So he wrote a song about how he didn't commit fraud. Yes. And like Rick Ross, like raps about like bloggers being mean to him. What happened to rap? What the hell? <laughs> That's terrible. Has Rick Ross played a thousand games? <laughs> it feels like he has. It may be. Do you want to hear some lyrics from Fire? Oh no! His, yeah, his track. No. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. This is one. Of, this is the segment called "Just When You Thought the Podcast Was Over." <laughs> he says the fest. I don't know what, how the uh, how his flow goes, so I would just read it verbatim. He says the fest. The festival is on fire. We don't need no water. Make that motherfucker hotter, hotter than the sun. But it wasn't that. Show of hands if you got your money back. Just playing. I got sued for that. A hundred mil, to be exact. I know you lack empathy for the one that's me. I, too, was bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. And then it goes on. You can't rap about your own memes about you being an idiot. (laughs) He says he was also hoodwinked and led astray and removes himself from all responsibility for the Fire Festival in his new track, Fire. You know, I'm going to go home and the, watch it again. The more we find out about <laughs> modern Ja Rule, the more I'm convinced that this is the only place modern Ja Rule could have found himself. You know what I mean? You know when, you, when you're when you like, how did that happen to that person? And then you meet that person, you're like, that's how. Yeah. Oh, that's, we're meeting Ja Rule and we're understanding. It's, it's funny to see where people end up 
because now that we're we're getting older, we see people who are like stars in their early years, and we're seeing, oh, this is kind of how your life went after you were a mega star in your early twenties and stuff. Yeah. So it's it's kind of fun seeing that. <laughs> and they're they're a bit squirrely, eh? Like mm-hmm. People that are post fame are a little bit. Oh yeah. They're always looking for that next thing. They're like, whoa, what's going to bring me back? Right. It's crazy. One of the saddest videos I've seen in a long time. You ever see that video of Lil Bow Wow? Um, walk, oh. he's, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He's like walking through a crowd of, there, there's like a high school field trip. And he's like putting his hoodie up to be like, oh, I don't want to get recognized. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get like ambushed by these high school kids who have no idea who I am. Man. I, isn't who the hell knows who and, he walks, and he walks right by them, but not because his, he had his hood up, but because they didn't recognize him. <laughs> oh. well, I got a question about that. Isn't he better known for 106 in Park when he was hosting it? Yeah. Maybe now? I would think, I would think so. Like to that generate, like mm. he was on, you know, when people come home from school and they watch that every night. Like that, I did, that yeah. would be, <laughs> that's a big deal. Getting that gig. I can't believe he, didn't he blow that too? Like didn't he? Yeah, he got fired that? eventually. Yeah. Man, like talk about, <laughs> <laughs> talk about a sweet freaking gig. And Do you remember the last time he was relevant was the Bow Wow meme where you pretend to stand in front of something that isn't oh, yours that's right, the because airplane. he t- he took the picture with the jet from the from the Google Images. Oh no! Do you remember when How I, did people find that out again? It was they just reverse image searched the the plane in the background. Why would you do that? No. All I remember from uh, 106 and Park is Freestyle Fridays. Remember yeah. Jin? Yes. Remember yeah. past champions? <laughs> Rapping over the, the the Jurassic Park beat? I love past gin. Champions. I miss gin. I gotta go home and listen to Dipset and Gin. I love it. <laughs> Alright, that's been our show Woo! today. Oh, love you. Cool. See you on Wednesday. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness. Connection complete.